Hello everybody, it's Founder Rich here with another Bino Finds video. I was waiting to get this package in the mail before I made this and it came today. This big ass package right here. I mean look how deep that is. Um, one record in here. Very impressed. Real Gone Music. It was a special order. I thought it was going to come in mid-August, uh, but here it is. Jefferson Airplane, Woodstock, Sunday, August 17th, 1969. The first time the complete set has been released, I think, period, but it, definitely on vinyl. Three records set. It came... With this little, I don't know what this is, a pill box or something. I don't know if you can see that. It says Jefferson Airplane on there. I'm not going to open that. I'll just leave it. Got the shrink wrap on. I slid it. I'm going to slide the shrink wrap off. Keep it like that. Got the, keep the hype st sticker. Now, I... I seen a few people recently just ripping the shrink off of their records. Off a new record like this, it's not that big a deal. This is a limited edition, so I think keeping the shrink is a good idea. But if you have an old record, a 60s, even a 70s, and it's in the original shrink wrap, I would leave it on. There's people that are willing to pay twice as much for that record, so you're devaluing your record by half. But anyways, enough of the rants. Let's just show some records here. Very cool record. Oh, man. Triple gatefold. And I'll show the other side. Very cool, man. First time I looked at this. Some very cool shots of the band. The... Jefferson Airplane, I don't believe they were in the original movie. They didn't really get much video footage of them. They played very early in the morning. They were supposed to play the evening before. But due to delays, they didn't play until the next morning. They were frying on acid the whole night. And it's surprising that they were able to pull off such a great set. I mean, I've heard, uh, what I've heard of the Jefferson Airplane at Woodstock, it's one of the better sets of the gig. I would say them, Hendrix, The Who, Santana, those four maybe, Sly and the Family Stone, um, but I haven't heard... All the, I mean, there's there's some other band, like the band. I, they were at Woodstock, weren't they? But they weren't in the movie or nothing. Anyways, what am I talking about? It's, Site 3 is one song, Wooden Ships. This was six months before it was released on their, uh, their album. Volunteers, is it? Yeah, I think it was on Volunteers, yeah. This was like six months before. 21 minute, almost 22 minute song. It's got volunteers on here. Fantastic, dude. This is going to be great. And I bought the limited edition. This is what the labels look like. And it's on this blue. Very cool. Like a... Turquoise, almost, but not quite. Very, It's lighter than a turquoise. Very, very purdy. Now, I recently did part two of my favorite psych albums. And somebody asked me, you know, you, you should do a modern psych one. And I was thinking about it, but I don't really have a lot of modern psych albums. I have a, some of that stuff on CD. I do have some. I've only been buying vinyl for maybe four years now. I mean, started rebuying it. Before that, I would just buy strictly CDs. I saw this for 15 bucks. This is one I have on CD. 
It's Foxygen. We are the 21st century ambassadors of peace and magic. It has sight tinges. It's definitely a 60s sounding record. This is a fantastic album. If you, I highly recommend this. If you like 60s music, check out this album by Foxygen. It's darn near uh, flawless. Side one is fantastic. It's got the song San Francisco on it. Check that song out. In fact, I might leave a link to that song. And like I said, it was only 15 bucks. Brand new. I think I have like four brand new albums on this and uh, three used. But yeah, this is a great album. I don't normally, if I have it on a record on CD, I don't normally uh, bother with the vinyl. But I saw that 15 bucks and it's a great album. Now, I have three, the next three records are all from France. And one of them's over here. I forgot to get it. The first one here. Skillet, I guess. It's a French band. It's a seven inch oi band. Fantastic, man. This thing has four songs on it. It's got a little insert. The guitar player from Rixie, or however you say that, is in this band. It's got like a sticker. It, it came with all kinds of stuff. It's plain black. The first song on side one is, uh, I think, it, Intro, it's called. Fantastic. It's just a short little ditty, but man, it is so great. It's not what you would expect from this skinhead looking band. Then the second song on side A is Skillet. And it's it's a great oi sounding UK82. The first song on side B sounds like a Four Skins song, kind of, in parts, but a little more modern sounding. And then the last song, Resilience. Fantastic. I mean, it is a great song. It, has, it actually has three guitar solos, believe it or not, in a punk rock song. And it came with this little advert, too. But really great little 7-inch. All the way from France. And it came with all these other little goodies. And a handwritten note, which I'll keep. Now my second one from France is Night Watchers. La Pax O Elise Sable. I I don't speak French. The Night Watchers. Now this one is a very accessible sounding record. I mean people that like the clash or that type of sound would, would dig this. It's not abrasive at all. Black vinyl. Glorious black vinyl. But man, it, it's, it, it sounds real, uh, I wouldn't say commercial, but accessible. That's the word. But man, the lyrics are fucking brutal, dude. Dealing, a lot of it's dealing with, uh, when France was in Vietnam before the U.S. was involved. And there's songs about anti-communism songs on here. And about France's uh, occupation of uh, different parts of the world. And it's, it's a brutal... The, the, the lyrics of this are brutal. Not easy listening. It, it's not like you're... I sit there and listen to the lyrics anyways. I didn't realize it. I heard this online. And then when I got it, and I'm reading the lyrics as it's going on, I'm like, holy man. Like one song here is Kid Screams, Turn Me On, Shooting Range, Butcher's Pair, Parade. It's very brutal. Very accessible sounding though. And I got one more from France. And this is by far my favorite of the three. 
I don't know how you say that. Coop Gorge. Troubles is the name of the album. Some of the songs I believe are sung in French and some are sung in English. But this is fantastic, dude. This and that uh, No Love album, Choke On It, are by far my two favorite albums released in uh, 2019. This is the insert. It's got a picture of the band that you will not be able to see. Lyrics. And... It's a one-sided disc, and on the other side, it's got this very cool hand-painted, hand-screened. But yeah, very cool. I'll, I'll definitely leave a link to this one, too. It's very cool. Um, there's a, a YouTube channel, uh, No Punks in K-Town. I'll leave a link to his channel. It's a really good channel to explore different punk bands if, you, if you're interested now on to the used records. This is a record that came out in 2016. It looked brand new. I'd never seen this before. It's Peel Concert. And it's from that era when the, the album uh, came out. And it's got a poster that says Concert. I'm not going to bother unfolding that. A bit ridiculous if you ask me this was a great tour they they would open the show up show off with a uh, cashmere by uh, Zeppelin fantastic dude pill were a great band live um, every time I saw them live they were fantastic with the exception of once and that time they were not the headliner they were a one of the opening bands, I think they were the second band out of three. The first band was Garbage. No, uh, not Garbage. It was that band, uh, Sugar Cubes, which were good, but they only played like a 30-minute set. I'd seen them before they even hit the whiskey. But then Pill came on, and they, they were, it wasn't that they were not good. They didn't do their full set. And the, the headliners was uh, New Order. And New Order was one of the most boring bands I have ever seen in my life live. They were terrible. Anyways, the concert album is great. And I need to do a pill video. The next used one is Oingo Boingo. They're 10 inch. And it's got only a lad on it. Violent Love. Ain't This Bad. And I'm So Bad. Four song EP. This is actually the only... Oingo Boingo I really need. I, I'm not really a big Oingo Boingo fan. I saw them in concert UC, at UCLA and I thought they were okay, but some of the songs I thought were good and others yeah. And that was only that was early on in their career and their later stuff I'm I'm not really a fan of. And finally, my last one, I'm gonna try to keep this short. It's Captain Beefheart, Bat Chain Puller. This is an album that never officially got released. Um, I think it did after Zappa died. But this is a bootleg of it. And uh, really actually good sounding record. Fantastic. This was basically the only uh, Captain Beefheart record I didn't have. I've never seen the official release uh, by uh, the Zappa family. And I think it's only a CD. So this completes my Captain Beefheart vinyl collection. And uh, this was produced by Zappa. The story behind this. No, it was on Zappa's label. It was going to be on Discreet Records, I think. The producer used some of Frank Zappa's royalties to pay for the recordings. Frank Zappa got pissed and he kept the tapes. And it, they were never released. That's it. Uh... Very impressed with Real Gone Records, dude. They know how to package. Look at that, man. You're not going to get any dings. And I mean, it's like this deep. And it, it held one record. When my wife saw that, she goes, How many records did you buy this time? 
<laughs> Take care. Go Jets. Oh yeah, look what I got, man. I picked up this Jets shirt today. And I got this for the car. License plate. Dodgers. Go Dodgers. Take care, everybody. Check out my uh, last two videos. The 1970s, a decade of good music. And the 1980s, a decade of good music.